I had a very high profile job. I had a photographic memory, several people, several organizations, several consulting groups working for me. If you had knew me or you talked to me, I would tell you all about what I did for a living. And that was all my identity was. Then the brain injury came and my identity for the next 13 and a half years became the brain injury. January 6, 1995, my car skidded on black ice. I ended up hitting my head and I hit the bar on the side of the car window. It should have killed me. The first doctor diagnosed me with a traumatic brain injury. I fell below the 25 percentile. Anybody below the 25 percentile is considered legally disabled. Cognitively, I fell in the fifth to ninth percentile. I was a math major and I could not do a simple third grade math problem. One pain felt like my head was like maybe a pumpkin and somebody had a machete knife and was just stabbing my head. Another pain felt like an electrical current that shoot from one side of my head to the other. I think deep down inside of me, I knew there was um, a journey I was about to begin. In an instant, Donna Jones, a high level executive, went from having a photographic memory to being cognitively disabled. Her diagnosis would include severe pain and limited mobility, but even more detrimental would be the loss of her cognitive abilities, specifically her short-term memory. This is a story of how Andrew's free teachings broke through a dysfunctional brain to help one woman from New Jersey realize her identity in Christ. This is the healing journey of Donna Jones. This healing journey begins years after Donna's car accident, where even as a brain injury survivor, she managed to find creative ways to maintain both an active life and her corporate position at work. It took me over two hours to get ready in the morning. I would forget to eat breakfast. So I would have this checklist that I would go through take a shower, brush your teeth, get dressed. It was very difficult for me to be around people. Um, it was very difficult for me to be around a lot of noise. My life became sitting on the sofa, just sleeping for days. Every year since I was 21, we would go skiing and I would really just stare out that window and just dream about seeing the mountains again. Work was so great at compensating. They, you know, they gave me a private office. I had people that would go food shopping for me. I had people who paid my bills. Because if I looked at the bill and then I went to look at the checkbook, that just moment would just vanish. Donald was working at AT&T at the time, the largest telecommunications company in the world. And she didn't know what the flashing light on her phone was. She asked me, she goes, what is that? I can't get rid of that. Um, it means you have a message? That made me realize, yeah, she needs help. We worked on a team together that was really close. We were together, you know, a lot, so we got to know each other very well. And it wasn't long before I found out we were both saved. She thought God gave me this brain injury. She would say it's a gift. I thought he was in control of everything. So I really believed that God chose me. I was gonna raise awareness. I was going to get the word out about brain injuries. I was going to be the spokesperson for those brain injury people who could not articulate what they were going through. Donna's whole identity was wrapped up in the brain injury, and thus her cycle of pain, confusion, and checklists continued for years. That is until the day that her coworker, Elisa, introduced her to Kathy, who was teaching a women's Bible study based on Andrew's teaching, God Wants You Well. Elisa, who was the girl, said, you know, hey, Donna has a brain injury and I'd like you to talk to her. And I just told her, you can be healed of that brain injury. You know, and I remember looking at her and going, no, nah, she's crazy. I have MRIs, CAT scans, I have all these doctor reports and she doesn't understand the full extent of this injury. You know, but God used that to plant a seed in my heart. You know, I gave her some scriptures and I pointed her towards Andrew's uh, website and I said, you know, listen to some good teaching on there watch some of the healing videos and things that are on there, and she did. We went to 18 doctors. Um, Nikki's popped out for me. A lot of the symptoms she described were very similar to my symptoms. I identified with her, and if she got completely healed, I knew I could be as well. And I think that was um, 
That was something that was really powerful for me at that moment. From that moment on, Donna believed it was God's will for her to be healed, and with the help of Elisa and Kathy, was determined to listen to Andrew's teachings until something broke through her damaged mind and became a personal revelation. Donna didn't have to unlearn anything because it was gone. So she had this childlike faith unlike anyone that I've ever met. When she got a hold of a scripture, she believed it. Myself and Elisa, we would on a weekly basis share scripture with her. Kathy was very good at directing me to where to go to listen. So I would just click on those links and just listen to him over and over. I don't think my natural brain was processing and understanding the information, but I really believe my spirit was hearing every word. I had to be healed emotionally first before I could be healed physically. The emotions of not feeling worthy, the emotions of, of being insecure. It says, and put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You aren't in the process of becoming righteous and holy. You were created that way. It was, you were just changed instantly when you got born again. If you can begin to understand that and focus on that, it will just automatically make the problems and the things that you're struggling with fall away. My identity changed from being a brain injury survivor to being a child of the Most High God. I believed that Jesus, by His stripes, took that 2,000 years ago, and something just clicked. I had a green bracelet that I wore on my wrist, and it was to raise awareness, because remember, I thought God chose me to raise awareness about brain injuries. I took that green bracelet off, almost like I didn't need that anymore. I also had a handicap sticker and said, if God really truly healed me, I don't need that handicap sticker anymore. I don't need to um, have any identity with this brain injury. So I actually took that handicap sticker off. A couple days later, we were sitting in church and there was an altar call for healing. Elisa was standing there and she had her hand on my back. As we're praying, I see a, a timer like an egg timer with that red dial on the top, and I heard the ding of it being done. Something went whoosh off the top of my head. I could actually feel like it was lifting up to heaven. The manifestation took place, and I was completely healed of the pain and the disability and everything I lived with for 13 and a half years. Then something interesting happened five years later. On my way to work one morning, I was stopped at a traffic light and somebody crashed into the back of my car while I was perfectly still. The impact was so significant. I remember just sitting there going, this is familiar territory. I've been down this road before. This, isn't, this doesn't feel good. I remember them coming back and, them, and giving me that diagnosis again. I had another traumatic brain injury. So for about three weeks, I lived with those symptoms again. The pain was so bad in my eyes, I literally could not move. If I moved at all, I could, the pain was just, would just rip through my head and my eyes to the point where I would sit with the phone and I would dial 91. And I would sit there and say, how bad does it get before I dial that last one? But I had the TV on and I, you know, somebody came on and they, they would just say, call out to Jesus. So I just said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus and something physically fell off me. And it fell from the top of my head to the floor, where to the point where I was actually like trying to catch what was falling, it was that significant. And God told me fear fell off me. I was starting to fear that I was gonna live like this again, that my journey again was gonna be living with this brain injury. And when God broke and Jesus broke that fear off me, then my brain completely woke up and I was just, you know, completely healed again, radically healed. Jesus already bought and paid for my healing. Those stripes he took on his back were for my healing. It was for my disability. It was for my pain. So it means it's already done. It's a done deal. I've already got it. Kathy and I uh, go out and teach now, and we have a ministry called Healing is for Everyone. We really want to reveal God's heart, that God really wants you well. Faith begins where the will of God is known. And once she discovered it was not God's will for her to have a brain injury, but rather Jesus paid for her healing, faith was easy. She's got an amazing story, but the story's bigger than just her experience. The story's about hope, and the story's about faith. 
she's really tuned in, turned on, and uh, <laughs> I don't think I could keep up with her. She's running a million miles an hour. I am ecstatic about seeing where she's going because she's not done yet. In addition to her teaching ministry with Kathy, Donna has published multiple books on healing, including two focused on her own journey. Andrew would like to encourage you to visit their website at healingisforeveryone.com. As if she wasn't busy enough already, Donna has just headed westward on her next adventure to attend Karis Bible College, where she'll learn even more about the truths that set her free. I just want to thank the partners of Andrew Womack's Ministries and the ability for these teachings to be free and online. It has just been such a powerful resource. It's literally changed my life. And Donna is just one example of the lives transformed thanks to the free teachings made available by our friends and partners. As for Donna's desire to see the mountains again, let's just say that God is giving her quite the view.